Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is characterized by a poorly reversible airflow obstruction and an abnormal inflammatory response in the lungs. COPD is an umbrella term used to describe airflow obstruction associated with three conditions, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma. These conditions simultaneously present in a patient, but to a greater or lesser extent. For example, in chronic bronchitis, we see inflammation of the bronchi and increased mucus production. With emphysema, there is a destruction in the lung parenchyma and permanent enlargement of the air spaces, whereas in asthma, there is a hyper-responsiveness of the airways, resulting in narrowing and accordingly increased mucus production. The learning objectives associated with this VR demonstration are to be able to describe the structural macroscopic changes of the lung parenchyma, airways and pulmonary vessels associated with moderate to severe COPD. You should also consider the functional and clinical implications associated with chronic bronchitis and emphysema as they present on the model. So COPD is characterized by increased numbers of neutrophils, macrophages, and T lymphocytes in the lungs. In general, the extent of the inflammation is related to the degree of airflow obstruction, as we'll see when we look at the airways within our model. In COPD, neutrophils, CD8 plus lymphocytes, and macrophages predominate the bronchial washings. Multiple inflammatory mediators are associated with lung parenchymal destructions in COPD, and this includes tumor necrosis factor, leukotriene B4, and interleukin-8. The inflammatory response represents the innate and adaptive immune responses to long-term exposure to noxious particles and gases, particularly cigarette or tobacco smoke. All cigarette smokers have some inflammation in their lungs, but those who develop COPD have an enhanced or abnormal response to inhaling toxic agents. So if we firstly have a look at what is considered to be the healthy lung model in VR, we can see that the lung parenchyma is going to have that soft, pink, squishy appearance, and we can see that there's no areas of destruction in our healthy model. If we then consider the gross anatomy of the lungs in a patient with severe COPD, we can see clear evident damage to the lung parenchyma, as evidenced by the regions in black. There is compelling evidence that protease to antiprotease imbalance plays a role in the modification of the inflammatory cascade, which results in this parenchymal destruction. Protease-mediated destruction of connective tissues, including elastin, results in the parenchymal damage, as well as results in emphysema. On an intricate level, if we had to then have a look inside the model, as we will later on in this video, we will see alveolar wall destruction from loss of epithelial and endothelial cells. Finally, lung volumes, including total lung capacity, TLC and residual volume, RV, are typically measured and we'll see that TLV, the so total lung volume, is increased in COPD, particularly in the presence of emphysema where there is significant loss of that elastic recoil which results in lung hyperinflation as you'll see on a chest x-ray. If we take a minute to appreciate the ventilation or airflow or air exchange that occurs as we inhale and exhale within a normal set or pair of lungs, we can see that there is that smooth transition of air as we inhale, it's flowing through the lungs, our lungs are expanding, pushing down, and then they constrict as air is then expelled. If we then look at the airways in a patient with severe COPD, we can see that in chronic bronchitis, we see thickening of the bronchial walls, as well as hypertrophy of airway smooth muscle, along with chronic inflammation and scarring, which results in airflow obstruction. So as we can see, airflow is no longer smooth as we inhale in and exhale out. Evidence of airway inflammation is found from the trachea down, and in this model, the primary and secondary bronchi down to the smallest peripheral airways. In the larger, more proximal airways, we see an increase in both the number and size of mucus secreting goblet cells, and this can result in the formation of mucus plugs, which further contributes to the airflow obstruction.
We can clearly see in our 3D model that we also see areas of blue that are not actually escaping as we are exhaling from the lungs and this is indicative of airway trapping. So as mentioned, the airway obstruction progressively traps the air during expiration and this results in hyperinflation at rest and dynamic hyperinflation during exercise. So if we then move on and look at the inside of the lung parenchyma, we can clearly see we have our areas or bundles of alveoli within the alveolar sacs. Notice that these are encompassed by a bed of capillaries. You can also see our bronchioles, so specifically we can see our respiratory bronchioles as air is being expelled in and out of these bronchioles. Also pay attention to the composition of the walls of the inside of the lungs. Notice that they are intact and as air is being expelled in and out, no air is actually remaining within the lung tissue itself. Another dimension of COPD is the degree of pulmonary, alveolar and vascular destruction that is caused by the pathological process of emphysema. So if we look at the development of emphysema, this is characterized by abnormal enhancement of air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles due to the alveolar septa being destructed or broken down as well as the capillary bed. So while this process leads to the loss of pulmonary elastic recoil and parenchymal support for the collapsible airways, it is also going to then affect the gas exchange as there's a reduction in the alveolar surface area. So we can see in our model that we see narrowing then of the respiratory bronchioles. We can also see we have significant discoloration within the inside of the lung evidenced by the black regions. And because we're seeing constriction now of the bronchioles, we can see that there is going to be airway obstruction evidenced by a smaller volume of air being expelled into the lungs and then back out again. Lastly, we can also see the phenomenon of air trapping. So we can see that we have the development of these air pockets or air, air spaces and the air spaces are going to be spaces where we see the entrapment of air within the lung tissue. So this is air that then cannot be expelled. And then finally, if we look at a 3D model that represents our pulmonary vessels, we can see that pulmonary hypertension is going to then develop late in COPD. So at the time of severe gas exchange abnormalities. If we consider the early changes in pulmonary vasculature, we will see intimal thickening and endothelial dysfunction. Well, as per this model, in late changes, this includes remodeling of the pulmonary arteries due to hypertrophy of the vasculature smooth muscle. We also see destruction of the capillary beds, as we saw in our internal model before. We see development of pulmonary hypertension, as well as right ventricular hypertrophy or enlargement and dysfunction. So if we then move on to look at the effects that an inhaler might have on the macroscopic anatomy of the lungs, as well as the physiological processes associated with gas exchange, as well as airflow, we know that in many patients with COPD, they will require pharmacological therapy. So if we finish up looking with the effects of an inhaler in a severe state of COPD on our VR model, we know that individual or combined therapies can be disseminated via an inhaler. Specifically, bronchodilators will relax the muscles around the airways. This helps to open the airways and makes breathing easier by decreasing airflow resistance. This is going to then increase the airflow and decreases dynamic hyperinflation. I thank you very much for your attention and watching this VR demonstration or short video on the macroscopic anatomy and physiological effects associated with COPD.